Welcome to episode 121. Are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? No matter your destination, the travel specialists at 3D Travel Company are there to help. Just head on over to my website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side to get your free quote today. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest is an entertainment attorney, a producer, a director, a voice actor, and so much more. You know, one of the things I know him best from is the 2012 Super Bowl commercial called Happy Grad, where mom and dad are giving away our high school graduate a mini fridge for college, but he thinks he's getting the Chevy Camaro behind mom and dad. It's super funny. I hope you guys enjoy this clip. It's always been one of my absolute favorite commercials, so it's been an honor to get to know our special guest on a more personal level. I hope you guys enjoy this clip and the interview to follow with today's special guest. I hope you all enjoy. A blindfold, Mom, really? Is this necessary? Happy graduation, sweetie! Ah! Ah! I can't believe you got me this car! <laughs> Amazing! Status update. Best day of my life! <laughs> I'm calling Grandma. Grandma Should we tell him that? No, 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 let him tire out first. Yeah. Check out my sweet ride! How can you jog when you can drive? <laughs> Not yet, he's losing steam. <laughs> Just let it run its course. I'm marrying you right now! So marrying you right now! No, we're getting married! <laughs> this is the best day of my life! <laughs> hey, Steve. Best gift ever! Love the car. Hey! Mr. Johnson just stole my car! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Who Did That Voice? In just a moment, the show will begin. So, so please, please sit, sit back, back, relax, and, and enjoy the show. show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show, I have Robert Siglin Paglia joining me. Robert, thank you so very much. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you so much for giving me some of your valuable time to chat with you. I am super excited to dive into some voiceover, some acting, and a little bit of law as well. Sure. So the very first thing we like to do, Robert, uh, you know, one of the first things we like to do is to get to know our special guest as best as possible. So tell me about young Rob, the boy that grew into the man he is today, and how did he become an actor? <laughs> uh, young Rob. Um, <laughs> I haven't thought about that in a while. Um, <laughs> Well, um, when I grew up, um, I was really into sports. I was, I spent most of my time playing pretty much every sport you could think of, but, uh, I really loved playing baseball. That was my main, uh, my main sport. I've been pl playing since I was, you know, basically time that I could walk. <laughs> um, and, uh, I still play actually. That's <laughs> so. awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so that's how I kind of learned teamwork, discipline, things along those lines. Um, I was a pretty good student in school. And then the acting thing, I didn't do that till later in life. Um, okay. I, I start. I was a DJ in um, college, which I loved. Crazy, awesome. So that's how I kind of got into the, started getting into the, uh, the performance arts. Yeah. Um, I've always loved music. I've, I've loved music since I was a little kid, too. That's um, awesome. And basically, you know, I when I was I was playing um I played baseball in college and I had actually gone to Eckerd College in St. Petersburg, Florida on a baseball scholarship because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a ball player. <laughs> nice. Um I ended up getting injured in a oh, freak yeah. accident down there. So, um I transferred up to University of Connecticut and I continued to play there. Um but I also decided in that time that I wanted to pursue law okay, um, because I really, I took a few classes and I really loved it. So, um, became a lawyer and then, you know, I was DJing in college. Um, so I, I was just flipping through an adult education book one day, my local adult ed. Um, and I saw a class on, on voiceovers. So I, 
I looked at it, you know, and I said, this looks like fun. I want to try it. So I went to the class and I was hooked from that point. So I became a voiceover artist. I started taking lots of classes and, and you know, caught my demo and, and um, um, got on one of the pay to plays. And it, that was actually when they were first starting out, the oh, pay to plays. Wow. And I booked a, a, a national TV gig for my first my first job nice. on uh, the PBS um, American Experience series, which is still on and it's been on forever. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I did a couple of voices for a, um, one of the episodes where uh, Campbell Scott was the narrator. Oh wow! And you know, like they have those uh, uh, some of those episodes they have um, where the you know people are speaking a foreign language and then they have the English. Yeah, yeah. Dubs. So that that's what I did. I couple I did a couple of those voices. The translation for it. That's awesome. Yeah, and it was I, I they did it at uh, Broadway Sound. Okay. So which is where they shoot uh, Saturday Night Live and do all the post. Dude, that's epic. Um, <laughs> at, 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 you know, Thirty Rock. So that's where I started. That's where, that's where my career started. That's super epic, man. <laughs> well, as you were growing up and even throughout your life, are there some actors that kind of inspired you towards becoming an actor? Like saying, hey, you know, I really liked so-and-so, you know? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I really liked Richard Gere. Okay. Loved his work. Yeah. Um, I loved Al Pacino and I loved <laughs> Robert De Niro. Yeah. And I actually got to work with them this past December. Say, what? <laughs> so, That's awesome. <laughs> so awesome. that was a gr- that was a great day. Um, yeah, no kidding. Uh, I did the Irishman that film the Irishman that that they're in with the yeah. uh, with the uh, um Scorsese. So I got Dude, to work that's with epic. Scor- <laughs> Scor- Scor- Scorsese and, and, uh, and De Niro and Pacino, right? In the Dude. scene that I was in. So it was, it was great. Freaking um, epic. <laughs> that's like legendary massiveness. Awesome, dude. That's like way epic. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I was, I, I mean, I did background on it, but I, you know, when they actually called me to ask me if I wanted to do the, 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 the part you know, yeah. as background. And I was like, yes, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> De Niro and Pacino in the scene. Absolutely. Nah, you know, I'm not a, interested. That's a, it's, a, it's a dream. <laughs> yeah. Like a boyhood dream come true. You're probably geeking out in the back going, Oh my gosh. I, I was, because was, I, I was like, right. They had, I was, I played a, uh, uh, a federal office worker. Okay. So I was like, they put me like right next to him. I was right next to him. <laughs> oh, dang. So, it was really cool that is super awesome well you know some of the shows that you've appeared on uh, national television shows for multiple different networks you've been on history channel discovery channel discovery id channel a and e national geographic the travel channel pbs as we kind of briefly mentioned and so many more uh you know and you've gotten to work on shows like rescue me uh maury povich and 30 rock which you mentioned being on the set or the stage for where they do 30 rock uh, which is right. pretty awesome, man. You know, I mean, those are some pretty epic shows, some pretty well-known uh, networks. Uh, and, you know, you've made multiple appearances on uh, Mysteries at the Museum, uh, watching yes. the detectives and Most Evil. Uh, and, you know, one of the things I absolutely love you for, and when, when I have started building my relationship with Rob um, and getting to know him as, as my... Um, entertainment attorney, uh, I got to know him because he mentioned that he was in the 2012 Chevy Super Bowl commercial called Happy Grad. And that commercial is definitely one that left an impression. Uh, you know, our Camaros at the time had only come out in 09. So 2012, they're about three years old. And uh, they were the big hype, the big car everybody wanted. Transformers yeah. was coming out. And you were in this commercial as the dad who is giving his son actually a mini fridge for his college dorm. And he thinks he's getting a Camaro. And it's just outrageously funny if you guys haven't seen it please check it out happy grad rob is the father in that commercial and it is epically funny and super great it just holds its weight today even today so thank you yeah it was fun that was that was another fun project that turned into a super bowl (laughs) commercial (laughs) well dude that's pretty epic that's me i mean billions of people saw you because those commercials get seen by everybody you know even if they didn't see the game they watch the commercials later so right That's epic. (laughs) Well, you know, um, some of the stuff you've done in voiceover, you know, you've appeared on countless commercials uh, in industrial films, uh, you know, doing voiceover for those kind of like you mentioned for PBS, where you were doing kind of the narration translation uh, of somebody speaking French or German or whatever. And you're doing the English uh, dub sub for them to uh, be able to be understood to the English audience, English speaking. And when you do those voiceover projects, 
do you find that it's hard to keep the pacing with, you know, how foreign languages and the way they're structured and the way they speak sometimes? How do you do those projects specifically, Rob? Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, sure. Actually, um, it, what they do is they have a monitor set up. Okay. So you, you actually watch the program and then they have, they have little beeps. So there's like three beeps and then you come in and you start talking. Yeah. And you kind of just, you know, out of one eye, you're watching the, you're watching the, the pacing. Yeah. Well, they play it for you first. So okay. you, you kind of get an, an idea. So you're watching the pacing as you're reading. And, you know, obviously it's not exact. It's not going to be exact because yeah. it's a different language. So you just have to kind of speak the line at the same time that they're speaking. And um, what they usually, what they did for uh, the one that I, the PBS one, is, you know, they had, they had it all timed out for me already. So basically the sheet just told me like how long the line had to be, you know, seven seconds or whatever. Nice. And they, they actually started it at, at the point where the person had already started to talk. Okay. So, okay. And then, I, then they had me come in so that it, 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 co- it matched up. That makes so. sense. Yeah. Well, in some foreign languages, they may speak longer than we do for the same amount of getting the, like the same phrase across or something, but their words take them a little bit longer or something. So, you know, that is something that some people may not be as familiar with if they're not used to uh, foreign languages as I am. And as you obviously are as well, Rob. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's like ADR. It's, it's very yeah. similar. Okay. Awesome. You know, aut- automated dialogue replacement where, you know, I've done that Yeah. several times for, for my films, you know, where I've had to go in and <laughs> speak the lines and, because something happened and it didn't come out during the production. No kidding. Yeah. Um, and I've actually, I did uh, a couple of times for some of those national shows, you know, the perfect murder and a couple of other ones, they actually sent me stuff to do out of my home studio, ADR. So, well, since you mentioned your shows, Rob, tell us a little bit about some of the films and things that you've been involved with, whether directing, producing, uh, and beyond. Sure. Well, I mean, I just actually just, uh, did a couple of mysteries at the museums. I love doing, I love doing those shows. They're so much fun because you know, they, 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 they dress you up in different period costumes and they're so much fun. So I did it. I, I did a few of those nice. that'll be airing um, for season nine, but I did a lot of, I've done so many of those. Uh, yeah. Back, going back to like, you know, 2006, I think is when I started doing work for um, that, the company that produces yeah. mysteries at the museum. So, uh, I mean, that's, you went through kind of my bio there. And a lot of those um, are produced by um, Optimum Productions, which is the company that does mystery. So I get a lot of work through through them. Um, some of the things that I've been working on um, recently that I've been producing, um, I've done a short film, two short films. One short film is called uh, Her Name is was Samantha, and that one did uh, the festival run a couple years back and we won one or two awards with it. A very short three minute short <laughs> horror film. That was the lead. Um, I've produced two full, full length features that are going to be coming out soon. Um, Being is one of them. And one okay. is the second one. Lance Hendrickson starred in both wow. both of those and i got to work with lance in one because i was the lead in that that's that's an editing that's awesome and i it was fun he's <laughs> great legendary yeah man um, i mean you're getting to work with some bigs man it's super awesome <laughs> i mean uh, if we have a little time i'll go over all the people that i worked with and i just it just blows my mind when yeah. i think when i think about it yeah because you know I, I, i'm able to I, I don't know how it works out but it works out where i get i get into a lot of these scenes where with a lot of the, these big actors and it, it's amazing. It's, it's so much fun. Absolutely. And another, another, two other things that I'm working on now. Um, I just shot a short film, another short film called within and without. Okay. And that was that, that one was the first one that I did all that I produced the whole thing on. Um, so I, you know, I hired everybody and hired the actor act, act two actresses and me um, I hired everybody, the, the whole crew, and it's being edited right now. Um, and it's a, I found the script. Every I did it from the whole thing, getting the scripts, getting the rights, all the way 
you know, now that to, it's almost finished in post. Um, so I'm really, and I, I, so far I really like what I'm seeing. It's, it's coming out great. So well, I can't I'm, wait. I'm, I'm proud of that project. Um, <laughs> and I, I also just did a TV pilot oh, um, wait, that cool. I wrote that, that I wrote. No way. Um, awesome. Yep. I wrote it. We, sh- I, I got, uh, I hired a production company in, out of the city. In fact, uh, uh, it's called shake the tree productions. That's the company that actually was very interested in shooting my, my pilot. Okay. And, um, Tony D'Antonio is one of the, uh, partners and Lou Martini Jr. is one of the partners and he okay. was on the Sopranos. Yeah. So he, I thought that sounded and he, familiar. <laughs> and he, he was in the Godfather. Oh, wow. So he directed, wow. he directed it. Uh, and that's in post right now. And we have a lot, a lot of interest. It's, that's a law, a legal show. It's called okay. justice delayed. Justice delayed. Uh, and it's okay. about, Yep, justice delayed. Justice delayed. It's about telling um, cases from the victim's point of view. Okay. With um, me and a private investigator. Okay. So, and it it gives insight about how attorneys use private investigators to help victims resolve their their cases. Huh. So that sounds fascinating. I love it. I can't wait to uh, to see these pilots and see the shows as they start coming out. So please keep me in the loop. I would love to know that and be able to share that as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I'm, this one I'm really excited about because there's a lot of buzz. We have a lot of, we already have a sales agent on board. We have, I got two investors that invested in the pilot that, that we've got a lot of activity on this one. So wow. it's, uh, you know, this one, it could be like the Super Bowl commercial, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> well, sometimes it takes a little time to get that steam worked up, but once you do, man, that train engine just blows on through man <laughs> absolutely absolutely that's awesome well and your production company is actually called bel air productions is that correct that's correct okay yes. that's a that's a cool name you know it makes me think of fresh prince of bel air <laughs> exactly yep yep, that's yep. A great bel- name. it's well i live on bel air road oh, nice. in norwalk, norwalk connecticut so that's where the name came from <laughs> that's so it's funny. got the, Cal- the california connection with the bel air so <laughs> Well, that's really cool. I, I thought of uh, Bel Air and I was thinking Cali, but it's, you know, it's funny because you're in Connecticut, but, you know, it's nice that there's a tie in between all of that entertainment industry there. Uh, you know, one of the high profile uh, voice projects that you've worked on where you were actually directing uh, was to help with Samsung creating the Bixby digital assistant uh, for phones and other products, which is super epic because now they're launching their own uh, competitive voice called Bixby. That is actually a female voice. It might sound like it could be a guy, but it is a female voice to uh, compete with Siri and Cortana and the Google assistant. So what was it like for you to get to work on this project and kind of spearhead this new voice for Samsung? It was awesome. It was great. Um, They, uh, another one of those things where um your your past connections and your networking come through because i had basically done some some work at a studio in new york and i get a call from the head of the studio the owner of the studio asking telling me about this project and wanted to know if i was i was interested in it and um so i actually not only did i direct well i started by negotiating the contract with Samsung. So that's wow. how the project started. <laughs> and then I, I was in on the tail end of the auditioning for that when it was narrowed down to three. And the, uh, the uh, producer uh, t- walked me through how that was done. Um, there was started out with thousands and thousands of auditions on both coasts and basically the whole country. Yeah, And it got narrowed down to 10. So I got to listen to all the 10 voices. Then it got narrowed down to three. <clears throat> and then they actually used the focus group to pick the final voice. Nice. Um, and then they also did the same thing, picking the name. They, they used the focus group. Okay. So. They used the focus group. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I wondered where the name came from because at first I thought it might be, you know, a, a, an assistant that was actually going to have maybe a, a male voice. Um, but when I heard her, I was like, oh, she's really peppy. She's really friendly. Uh, and she seems really intelligent. So I, I look forward to learning more about her uh, through the Samsung products. Yes. And, and basically the, the, the we um, recorded the whole thing where now, you know, the, it's on the phones. Yeah. Um, and the way the pro the way the process works is it's fascinating. I mean, you just, they, you're in the studio and you, you read 
all these phrases that they don't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then they, they put it all together, you know, and, that, and that's how they come up with the, the commands. Um, you read the commands too, but I mean, you know, like to make it intelligent, they, they there's all kinds of phrases that you read. It's just crazy. Um, <laughs> and they're going to now integrate these into their appliances. So that's the next oh, wow. step. So like their, your smartphone will be able to like, if you, you know, you have a refrigerator, uh, your smartphone will tell you, you need milk. And that's ridiculous, be by, man. <laughs> by voice. Same thing with TV. Like your, yeah. you know, your TV will be integrated with the smartphone and you know, the, the Bixby voice will be controlling the television. So oh my like, gosh. that's what, the washer and dryer, same thing. Like they're they're integrating them in all, to all their appliances. That is ridiculously that's the, that's epic. The next phase, <laughs> dude. So. It sounds like the Jetsons or something, you know, or like exactly. Back to the Future, you know. <laughs> Artificial intelligence, dude. Yes, that's, that's that's what it is. That so. is crazy. You can have your laundry going before you even get home. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yep, you'll be able to control the whole house with, from your smartphone. You know, with the voice assistant. Um, it's it's. That's the future. So that that's why it was it was great to be part of that project because I was part of, you know, part of the future, <laughs> part of history, part of spearheading that project. I mean, that's pretty epic because being in on the rudimentary floor of that, you know, it'll be like, you know, some of the basic history of how that came to be. And you're in part of that, which is that's super iconic. It was. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it was tumbling. That's for sure. So. Well, some of you out there may not be familiar with what an entertainment lawyer is. Rob, why don't you tell us a little bit about what that is? Sure. Um, an entertainment lawyer deals with um, acting, voiceovers, music, um, any artistic endeavor. Um, and it basically involves reviewing contracts, um, copywriting, trademarking, uh agency agreements uh if it's film it would be you know the financing agreements the production agreements uh if it's television you know it would be distribution uh there's a whole the, the the term entertainment law is very very broad yeah so um but it involves a lot of contract work it involves intellectual property um those are the main areas that you're working with most of the time. I, so. pre I appreciate you diving into kind of the rudimentary of what an entertainment lawyer is. Cause I know I personally was not very familiar with what an entertainment lawyer was until sadly through the course of doing my podcasts, uh, people will remember that I, I made an announcement in December of last year that, you know, I had trademarked my company and all of that was provoked by some outside sources that were putting some pressure on the show and some things happened. I'm not going to go into details, but thankfully my voiceover comrades out there directed me towards Rob and Rob helped save my Heine and help keep who did that voice where it is today. So thank you, Rob, first of all. And uh, if anyone out there is needing an entertainment attorney, uh, that is one area of specialty that he definitely uh, does specialize in, but he does a little bit of everything. I think uh, you're also... Um, you were named a super lawyer by Connecticut and New England magazine uh, since 2009, and you were named one of the top 100 trial lawyers for Connecticut by the National Trier Trial Lawyers Association. Is that correct? That's correct. That's yes. awesome. So if you need an attorney, especially when it comes to the entertainment industry, I highly recommend Rob as he is my entertainment attorney. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that you may not be familiar with or understand, but that's what an attorney like Rob is there for. So I highly recommend it, especially if you're looking at LLCing or, you know, you're trying to make a film or something and you need contracts looked at and you don't understand it. Rob really knows his stuff and he is definitely the man you want to want to seek out. So Rob, thank you so much for your services and for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'll give you your five bucks in the, in the mail. <laughs> I appreciate it. My little, uh, my little ref referral fee. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, um, uh, as far as your book goes, we haven't talked about that yet, but I wanted to mention it. Uh, you know, Voice Over Legal is the name of your book, and it was a number one hit on Amazon, bestseller list of 2015 uh, regarding the entertainment law category. And so I highly recommend that to anyone who wants more information from Rob without directly speaking to him. Please pick up his book, Voice Over Legal. It would give you some great insight and great uh, direction as to where to head so that Rob could help continue the process and the 
the conversation once you have a better understanding of what entertainment law is. Rob, can you follow up with anything else in your book that might be beneficial or uh, helpful to somebody out there that might not know? Is this the book for me? Yeah, I mean, obviously that um, is for the voiceover industry specifically. So anyone that is interested in the voiceover industry, um, the book helps with learning about the business itself, okay. plus the legal issues involved with the business. And they go hand in hand. Yeah. The legal issues and the business issues, they're very much all mish, mishmash together. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's hard yeah. to separate them. Yeah. Um, you know, cause you have tax issues and you have LLC issues and, you know, running your business issues that those are all legal issues too. So, yeah. um, anyone, and you know, the, the book would also apply to acting as well on um, the acting business. So, um, to, and, and to the radio broadcasting in, industry, um, you know, they, those are all overlap, but I wrote it specifically for the voiceover business because the way the book came about were, um, voiceover artists that had questions um, would contact me. And so what I did was I started writing down all the common questions that I would get yeah. and put it into a book format. And that's how the book was born. So um, anyone that has, you know, like questions like, should I form an LLC or should I say a, stay a sole proprietor, you know, or should I be a corporation? You know, th those are the kind of questions that I get routinely. So that's, that's in the book. Do I need a contract? Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's that's in the book, and I have I have a sample a contract in in the book. Nice, um, nice. And then you know, just things that you can run across on a daily basis that could go wrong or get you sued or get you in trouble. Yeah, and how to how to protect yourself. That's in the book. You know, I talk about agencies a little bit too. I talk about what kind of agreements should you sign with an agent? Uh, how do you get an agent? Um, those kind of things. So, you know, things that people they're interested in and people there, they have questions about on a daily basis. Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you diving into that a little bit more, Rob, you know, uh, I know in regards to uh, legal advice and understanding that kind of stuff, it, you know, one thing people don't understand is that voiceover is not just you doing funny voices. It is acting number one, which is one thing I've definitely learned over the course of doing my show. But number two, it's running a business. It's not just, Hey, I'm going to do some funny voices or, Hey, I'm actually going to be acting, whatever the perspective of that individual, they also have to realize that this is a business. It's not just, you know, some fun foo-foo thing that yes, it can be very fun and there can be a lot of awesome stuff to it, but there is a business side that they've got to be aware of and, and be able to protect themselves from all the crazy options that could happen to them. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And that's the difference between a hobbyist and a, and a business person. So I mean, you can do all the funny voices and you can have fun. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But if you want to make money at this, it's a business. So Absolutely. Well, and uh, so guys, definitely pick up his book, Voice Over Legal. Uh, it is a number one seller and it's available wherever books are sold. So please check that out. You know, uh, Rob, what is your social media? How can people reach out to you? Maybe they're seeking legal service. Maybe they have some questions about voiceover or maybe they are actually looking to hire you for a project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's many ways to get a get a hold of me. I'm, I'm all over social media <laughs> and the in the internet. Um, Robpaglia.com is my acting website. Okay. Um, R O B S C I G E S Q Rob Sig Esk.com is my law website. Um, I'm on Facebook uh, at Rob Sig. Uh, is my Twitter handle. That's also my Instagram. So, I mean, you can definitely find me. I mean, you just Google my name and I'll, I'll be, I'll, you'll, you'll see all, all the things pop up. Awesome. So. Awesome. He's pretty easy to find, but, uh, I always like to throw that out there just so people have a, a little bit more direction just in case, uh, they sure. have a little bit more difficulty exploring the internet. <laughs> it can be a, a wide and vast hole if you're not careful because uh, you search something and you can get lost looking at pictures of kittens. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, uh, but anyway, Rob, what kind of advice would you give to an aspiring actor or actress who might be looking at pursuing a field in the acting industry within the niche of voiceover? Um, I mean, it's kind of cliche, but people are going to say you should train, 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 and, you know, cut your demo. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree with that. Um, I mean, I, I, the advice that I give that I would give even before that is 
do the research, do the research on the industry, um, be, learn about the business that you're going to embark on, um, learn the players that are involved so that you can market properly, learn as many players as you can as far as coaches, um, demo producers, production houses, advertising agencies, you know, learn, learn how all of those different people and different companies interact with one another. Yeah. Um, getting a little background knowledge about how the industry works goes a real, really long way because it, it can be daunting. So learning it helps so that it's not so daunting. So that's not it. You know, then you, you do realize after a while that it's a really small world <laughs> And you see the same people over and over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it gives new meaning to the the song. It's a small world after all. <laughs> abs, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Rob, you had kind of mentioned uh, you know some of the people you've worked with, like Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Like, so tell us, like, where who are some of the other people you've gotten to work with? Because you'd mentioned, you know, those were just a few of the awesome people you've gotten the chance to work with. Yeah, I definitely, um, I, I've definitely been fortunate on on the people that I've been able to work with and it's kind of mind blowing, um, <laughs> to me, <laughs> yeah. you know, and a lot of times I'll show up on set and, and I'll, I'll be working with these famous big, huge actors. So, yeah. um, you know, like rescue me, you had mentioned from my, my bio that I had worked on rescue me. So, you know, that's a perfect example. I show up on set and the director picks me to play one of the Gavin family members at the, <laughs> at the Gavin funeral. Oh, wow. So they put me right next to, um, uh, um, Tatum O'Neill and, uh, Dennis Leary. So <laughs> I, I was like standing right next to them. Dude. So, so boom, there you go. So, you know, in fact, Tatum O'Neill like dropped a tissue at one point and I picked it up and, and <laughs> for her you know like and she was like thank you and you know we talked a little bit but that that's like one of the the, the jobs um that that happened 30 rock we had mentioned that too yeah, yeah. and and um, they actually hired me as an ice skater so <laughs> i got <laughs> nice. i got this i got to skate in 30 rock Dude, that's awesome <laughs> and i remember it was uh, halloween so i'm skating around 30 rock with like 20 people you know like it, uh, how many people love to just to be able to skate at 30 rock. I was doing it on TV. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and I remember like when they handed us, they let us warm up a little bit before they started to shoot. So we were just skating around just to get used to things. Yeah. And, um, so they tell us to come off the ice. So I start coming off the ice and, uh, I grab, um, both sides of the wall going out of the gate, Yeah. you know, and I swing my feet over the, over the threshold yeah and who's like right in my face alec baldwin <laughs> I, I almost killed him <laughs> oh wow and he's, and he's like oh <laughs> and i was like sorry <laughs> so and then another time on 30 rock they uh they pick me out of like a whole like 50 guys and holding they pick me and another guy to go walking off the elevator with tina fey Oh, so I get wow. to like walk right by Tina Fey and say hi to her and go go into the elevator. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's awesome. That, so, and then um, I I worked on American Gangster. No way. That's a great that one. film with Russell Crowe and Denzel Washington and Ridley Scott was the director. Dude, yeah. So, <clears throat> I, I I got hired for two days for that. They um, I, I was gonna be like a just a, a person a press member. Yeah. You know, so they fit me up and I had my costume and, um, so I'm standing there waiting to be placed and I feel this tug on my left sleeve and I, I look over, it's Ridley Scott Oh man, tugging on my sleeve and he's like, you know what? I want to make you a, a press photographer, go back into the wardrobe and tell him to put you in a tux. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I go back, Ridley Scott <laughs> just sent me back here for a tux. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> so, so then they put me like a rig side, and um, there was the scene where uh, all the all the celebrity impersonators come walking in. I don't know if you saw the film, but like there was that Ali Frazier yeah, yeah. Uh, reenactment 
fight that they did. And there was a scene where everyone was walking in to the fight. And um, so they gave me a camera. And oh, again, wow. Ridley Scott comes walking down, like, from wherever he was, looking at the monitor. And he comes over to me. And he's like, all right, I want you to hold this camera like this. And I want you to point it over there at Russell <laughs> and wow. take the picture. And so Russell Crowe, he was like five or six feet from me. And Ridley <laughs> Scott's like telling me how he wants me to take the picture. And I'm like, that's that's how I – now I understand why Ridley Scott's films are they're so awesome and they're so detailed because like there's, there's no way – big director like that is going to come like he, he takes the time to go talk to the extra and just to get into the shot the, exactly the way he wants to wow. you know like he could just send over an ad or you know or pa to talk to the extra but he did he did it himself well it, so his films are amazing and it, and it shows through the the films he's made and through hearing this story it really shows that he takes the time to go the extra mile and i i applaud him for that that's amazing Absolutely. Yeah. And th- that <laughs> whole scene with the, the, the Ali Frazier, yeah. man, that was just, he got the, he got the, um, the, uh, the grandson of the actual referee Oh wow! <laughs> to be the referee in that thing. And he, I mean, it was just, the whole thing was just, it was like, you were absolutely there. It was, it was amazing. That's epic. Um, and then I got, <laughs> I got to see, yeah, it was, and I got to see Denzel Washington oh, wow. and, and how he works. And it was just amazing to watch how he, prepares a scene um and you know this is this is all the stuff i I had done some background work when i first started this is when i was first starting yeah and and all this stuff helped me with where i am now because i got to watch these guys close and see how they work and see how they you know like how they concentrate how they how they just make some the stuff look so easy yeah um, and it's not, we all know it's not, but they make it look that like it's easy because of their, the, how the, their professionalism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and then just another real quick story. Um, the, 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 the actually two, two stories. Okay. Cause after, after I had done the, uh, that PBS documentary and I, I started doing on camera work after that and I just basically got my headshots done. Um, on a whim like somebody said oh you, if you do voiceover you should you should just get your headshots done and and send them in and uh, you know try to do some background work and see what happens so right after that i uh booked two days on um music and lyrics that that film music and lyrics yeah yeah with hugh grant and uh you know drew barrymore yeah so they booked me for two days so i i ended up working like in the middle of a scene with Drew, uh, with, um, Hugh Grant. Oh, and wow. I, I remember like after it was shot and everything, it was new year's Eve and I'm standing, I was at a family party. I'm standing in the kitchen and all of a sudden I hear everyone screaming in the other room and they're like, Rob, you're on TV. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm running in. Apparently I made the trailer. So oh, like, wow. it was like, Dick Clark's Rock and Eve, and I'm there. I am on the tra- on the trailer. Wow! For, for music and lyrics. So, right after that, I, I you know that right after I shot that film, I yeah. got booked for 13 days to do background on Disney's Enchanted. What? That's and awesome. This is <laughs> this is this is when I became I, I turned I, I I my whole life transformed because yeah. I I was working for a law firm at that time. Um, I was, you know, working the, the 60 hour work weeks. I was hating it. <laughs> so, so what I, w- I w- had started in the voiceover, the acting world, um, you know, and I was, I would take, like, I took a vacation day to do the PBS thing. Yeah. Right. So I had used up all my vacation. It was like March. I had already used it all up. <laughs> wow. So I go to, I go to my wife, look, I got offered this part to, you know, I got offered this, this 13 day gig for this Disney film, but I can't do it. I don't have any more vacation left. You know what my wife told me? What? Quit that damn job. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, that's Disney. That's going to be forever. You're going to be able to show your grandkids that. Go yeah. do go do it. Quit your job. Go back. Go on your own. She told me like to you know go back. On. I had, was a solo practitioner you know, a few years before that. So she told me to go back and become <laughs> a solo practitioner and go do that job. That's and I awesome. did. 
and I ended up in the final cut of, of the film. Like they, they actually featured me. I was picked and I was featured. So, and that was, um, Amy Adams, Susan Sarand, Amy Adams, when she wasn't really big yet, she was just starting. Yeah. Um, she was kind of just becoming a starlet. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I got to talk to her a lot because we were there 13 days. Dude. Um, <laughs> um, Susan Sarandon, uh, James Marsden. He was another one that was kind of just his career was just started to to blossom there. So I talked to him for a, a lot on set. Um, uh, Patrick Dempsey. You know all these yeah. people I got to work with. Susan Sarandon was amazing. Like she, they. I, I don't know if you remember. She played Ursula and she had like all this makeup and stuff on, and you yeah. know they yeah. turned her into a monster. Well, she was in that makeup for oh I. Um, Idina Men- Menzel too. She was she was she was also one that Jen Jen was just starting. Yeah. At the time, so I spent I spent a lot of time talking to her. Um, but <laughs> awesome. Susan Sarandon, like they, they, it was hours in makeup, hours and hours and hours, and we were on set for hours and hours and hours and hours. You know, because it was in I was in the ballroom scene with the dancers. Oh, um, I was gonna say, where can people see you in it? But the ballroom scene is beautiful. Wow. Yes, I was. In the, I'm in the ballroom scene right after the kiss. Right after Amy Adams, right after Patrick Dempsey kisses her. Okay. There's the two old ladies say, this is the greatest show I've ever seen. You know, like they're at the table. I'm right there at the table. Like awesome. that's where you'll see me. <laughs> that. I'll have but to get Susan enchanted Sarandon. autographed by you now. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So <laughs> Susan Sarandon, though, like she would you know, be in makeup for hours and hours, like literally eight hours of yeah. makeup. And then she came out and there was a scene. It was like, I remember it was like one o'clock in the morning. And um, Susan Sarandon, like when she she when she sticks the sword in the floor and yeah. and, and and gets the the apple, which was added later. Yeah, you know she came in, boom, did that in like two takes, done. <laughs> and it was she was just amazing. It was amazing. That's epic. Oh, and I I also saved Amy Adams' life during that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, crazy. because we were like, you know, the scene where uh, the dragon comes in. The, yeah, uh, CGI dragon and everyone runs out. Yeah, yeah. And A.B. Adams runs down because mm-hmm. Patrick Dempsey gets pulled uh, out of the <laughs> out of the ballroom. Yeah. Well, we this was again. It was like two o'clock in the morning when we shot that thing, and we were running up the stairs. We did it like twenty or twenty five times to get it right. Wow. To get the timing right and everything. Well, one one take of that, one of the extra shoes fell off, and Amy Adams tripped on it. <laughs> Oh, wow. And I was I was standing right there when she did, and I caught I caught her from oh, wow. falling like halfway down the stairs. Oh my gosh! So, and she was she was mad because she was like, "Can we just get this thing done?" And you know, like she she was mad at though because you know, I don't blame her because it was like two o'clock in the morning, and you know, she almost killed herself. And <laughs> so, that's crazy. But those are all those are my stories. You know, some some of my stories. I have others, but you know, like just you know the people I was, I've been able to work with along the way yeah well I really appreciate you diving into it those are some pretty fascinating stories especially for Enchanted I absolutely love that film the music in it is so beautiful so I really appreciate you diving into all those different uh, films and productions you were working on with all these amazing people and talented actors absolutely I, 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 uh, thank you for giving me the chance to tell the stories <laughs> absolutely well thank you for being on the show thank you Absolutely. Well, Rob, I have one final question for you this evening. And the question is, what is the legacy that you want to leave behind? That's a good question. Um, I think I've realized that that recently Um, in producing my films, I also learned a lot about myself, my acting abilities. Um, So I, what I really the legacy I'd love to leave behind is for someone, anyone, everyone, <laughs> to <laughs> to see to see see one of my uh, my films, see some of my work, and to be to be moved by it, inspired by it. Um, that's I, I've learned that I really want to inspire people, um, and I guess I guess I knew that for a long time that I wanted to inspire people, but I guess I just didn't have direction on how to do that. I totally understand so, that. Yeah. Now that I started to be, make films, it started to click a little bit for me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's one great avenue yeah. to inspire people and to, you know, get your message across, get your, you know, get your work seen. Yeah. Um, 
you know, even if somebody doesn't like the work, it's fine. Um, yeah. It's just that it's it's there to be seen, you know, kind of like the Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> it's a per- perfect example. That was, yeah. you know, that that was something that started out as a spec commercial for a film festival, and it turned out to be on the Super Bowl. You know that yeah. that kind that kind of thing. It proves to myself and to anyone looking that anything's possible and anything can happen, and as you know, as long as you just putting your nose down and working good things can can happen absolutely i totally agree well rob it has been an absolute honor and pleasure having you on the show today would you please give us a special close out as we wrap up today's episode this is rob sigam on who did that voice and i hope that you all can obtain your dreams whatever they may be well, everyone, I sure hope you enjoyed today's episode with Robert Siglin-Paglia, the entertainment attorney at law, and so much more. And if you did, please find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram by searching Who Did That Voice. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. For those of you listening on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button today and hit the little bell notification so you don't miss out on a single episode. I've been your host, Trenton Larkin, and I'll see you next time on Who Did That Voice. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away. Well, everyone, that's all the time we have for this episode. Join us next time for our special guest, Kelly Sheridan, the voice of Barbie. You won't want to miss this episode. Hey, do you ask yourself, who did that voice? Well, if you do, go to our website, www.whodidthatvoice.co, and click on the Episodes tab. Choose an actor, pick their name, and see pictures from the different characters they voiced in their career. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you next time for more discoveries on Who Did That Voice.